and now we're in Hoi An. And the sun's out, which is good. Good morning, it's Tuesday. Uh, yesterday was the bank holiday, nice short week this week. And I'm gonna try and do a little bit of video every day uh, that I'm working. So this is a Mustang V8. I picked it up this morning in South End. Uh, the customer lives just across the road from me. It's a car that I detailed last year with uh, G-Technic Crystal Serum and EXO, and it's in for a top up and just a check over to see if it's in good condition still, which I'm happy to say it is. The serum has been doing its job, hasn't picked up uh, any swirl marks really, just a few tiny little localized marks here and there. And if I show you around on this side of the bonnet, which isn't polished, uh, uh, some water spots, which unfortunately were a downside of the EXO V2. Those are polishing up pretty easily, just the upper panels to do. And then on with another coat of uh, XOV3 to hopefully reduce the chance of these uh, marks happening again. So all good, just got a day on this. Um, like I say, the serum has been doing a good job. Uh, back to South End with this car tonight for the customer and uh, a Panamera and a 996 C4S to do later this week. Last vlog, uh, we had just arrived in uh, Vietnam. We had New Year's Eve in Hanoi. That was, I mean, just mental, the uh, amount of people that you could see there. You saw the uh, cars and the motorbikes trying to drive through all the traffic. Um, so really good fun, really friendly people. After there, we went to Heilong Bay, and then we went down to a town called Hue. Uh, after there, we then got uh, motorbike transfers from Hue down to Hoi An. Yeah, the, um, the Hoi Van Pass that we drove through, that was the road that the Top Gear guys went through. So some beautiful scenery. Unfortunately, it wasn't the greatest weather when we did it, but still um, nice to be out on the back of the bikes and, um, and to be able to see everything. Uh, yeah, so hope you enjoy the footage. It is Tuesday and the Mustang that I detailed yesterday is back with a customer. I had to pick it up from South End in the morning and drop it back off again. Nice drive, um, much more comfortable car than I thought it would be actually. Look forward to hopefully renting one of those in America when me and my wife go next year. And, and that was in for a one day top up. It was um, 10,000 miles old. I originally coated it a year ago when it was brand new with Serum and EXO. It had version two on it, so it had a few water spots. Um, that was one of the downsides of EXO version two. Uh, partly why they came up with version 3 uh, which doesn't have the water spotting issue so a little bit of polishing on the on the top panels and then coated the whole car again with version 3 tidied the wheels up did the interior and um, it's good again for another year and like I said in the video yesterday not many swirls or marks on the car at all so the serum obviously doing a really good job it's a car that lives outside it's not a garage queen and it does get used admittedly not much only 10,000 miles in a year isn't a high mileage uh, but the serum doing a really good job and keeping it in top condition. Which brings me on to this car, another brand new car. This is having Serum Lite and EXO as well. It's a similar package to the customer was offered from Porsche, uh, where he picked the car up. Um, but from first-hand experience of dealers, they normally spend around an hour tops on the car. They're not paid very much, the actual valeters that do the work. So you can imagine the amount of uh, effort they'll put into uh, looking after your brand new car. Instead, I'll spend about two days on the car, um, check the paint over properly, put the serum on as it's supposed to be applied, leave it to cure for the proper time as well. And you get a much better durability from it um, and it, it acts as it should do instead of um, being applied quickly and, and, and not doing the proper job. So that's why this is in, that's why a new car is, um, it's always worth having a new car detail. And price wise it was a fairly similar price to uh, what Porsche were offering as well. Um, and obviously I feel I do a much better job than what Porsche would do. Yeah, the last vlog um, seemed to go down a bit better, put some detailing bits in there. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, go and check it out now. There's also the uh, vlog before that, I think it's uh, vlog 13. Not many people watched it, I don't mind that, but there's a little montage at the beginning of the beginning of our holiday in Hong Kong. And um, 
I quite enjoyed making it. I thought it was not too bad, little montage. So go and check that out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, like I say, vlog 13. I'll link it at the end of this video and maybe up here somewhere as well. I'm gonna get on with this car and I will probably see you tomorrow. I should also say uh, the Porsche price doesn't include the EXO top coat. So you're much better off having a detailer apply it compared to asking a dealership to apply it. Hi guys, it's now Thursday and I'm putting the EXO onto the Panamera. EXO V3 now comes in this uh, nice red box. So I'm gonna do this door now and I'll show you how to apply it. So that's just over one milliliter of product onto the pad. and just with very little pressure, nice even swipes over the panel. And now this doesn't flash off like the other one did, so you've got a f about a minute or so uh, before it starts to go a bit sticky, but that's plenty of time to get the product on. Some more products to go on the lower part of the door. Like I say, you don't want to, don't be stingy with it. You can put enough on. And make sure you get a nice even coverage. Now in comparison to the old XA, you'd have done a much smaller little section and immediately buffed it off and then sworn a bit and shouted and polished it and then reapplied it and then probably sworn again because it was just not the easiest thing to work with. This, not really very difficult at all. You still need to have decent conditions so you can see everything. And I don't know if you can see, zoom in. Can you see it applied there? Is it gonna focus? There we go, yeah, I mean, you can see it applied. And if I just start buffing that section, it doesn't immediately come off with the first pass. You need to wipe over the whole panel and then flip the towel over and then with the clean sides, look at that, just straight off. And then if I zoom out with a second towel, there we go, with the second towel now, the usual checking the panels next to it just to make sure you haven't pushed any products onto those panels because eventually it will set and then it will be a bit of a pain to get off. Um, but just a, a good wipe over the whole panel and the opposing panels to make sure that you've removed it all. Focus around the handle so that there's none trapped underneath it that you've missed. And then just with your inspection light, give it a, a once over to see that you've got it all. And it is as easy as that. So great product, really nice to use. Uh, I'm going to now coat the rest of the panels that I need to do and finish the wheels off and that's this car almost done. So a customer just called, hey Nathan, can you drop my car off at Colchester? Absolutely. And here we are successfully at uh, Ferrari Colchester. Right, obviously I've got to get back and uh, luckily the customer has provided another car another Ferrari. This time a 612 Scagletti. Right, 
Right, this has been great. Uh, time to head back to Auto Store, finish off the Panamera, and um, I'll do a walk around back at Auto Store. Evening guys, it's um, Friday evening, it's about 7.15pm, uh, all my mates and work colleagues are down the pub no doubt. I'm still here just trying to uh, get a bit more done on this car. Uh, this is what I've been working on today, a 996 Carrera 4S, it's actually for sale. Um, really nice car mechanically, paint was letting it down so I've been giving it a polish, working my way down. This side so I've done door, rear quarter, all the roofs done and the pillars and now working around this side. I thought I'd show you quickly um, what I look for with the inspection lamp because one of the questions I had uh, from the previous Q&A, what uh, do you look for with the inspection lamp? So uh, you'll often see me holding this blue light and shining it at the car. So let me put this camera on a tripod and I'll quickly show you exactly what I'm looking at. Right, in these lighting conditions, it looks like a normal kind of shiny black car. Most people would look at that and go, oh, well, black car, that looks fine. So with the inspection lamp, and I'm going to angle it as if you're the, um, you're the person looking and turn the light on. With the light shining that way, I see a lot of people holding the light like this and looking at where the light is shining and, think, and kind of moving it around and going, oh yeah. But actually you're not really seeing the reflection of the light. What you need to do is, again, imagine you're the person, move the light so it's shining back towards you and then you can see the marks in the paint. So if it's pointing that way away from you and you're just looking at where the beam, see the beam is landing here on the camera, you can't really see, you can see a few swirls, but you can't, it's not showing you much. If you angle it so that it's reflecting off the panel and then back towards you, you can see a lot more. And this is what you're looking for in terms of the marks on the paint. So if I zoom in, all these tiny little hairline scratches, those are swirl marks. So again, if I point it that way, back looking down the barrel of the light, you can see it's lighting up the panel. I mean, you can see there on and off that there is a difference in light, but it's not really showing you the marks. You have to angle it back and point it towards you. Hopefully that helps explain what you're looking for. Um, and I will see you in the next video. motorway slip road in Vietnam. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Perfectly normal, that's fine. 